Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd habita fillah Continue our study of Ibn al-Qayyim's treaties Wa tawakkal We reached a portion of the treaties that the Imam said Rahimahullah ta'ala He said being pleased and content uh, and so here Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about another level of tawakkal and that is when the slave becomes totally content with Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree with regard to their affairs and this is also imperative for the believer to strive their utmost to be content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, his decree and leaving and, and related to tawakkul to leaving their affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being content with that and again you see why this is a high level of iman and a high level of tawakkul why Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned it as it actually in stages because of that very reason that it is it's a different level it's a different level of iman it's a higher level to when you get to the state of you're actually relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting your trust totally in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he subhanahu wa ta'ala and in your affairs with Allah azza wa jal that he will make your affairs easy and deliver for you. And so Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, this is the fruit of tawakkul. And those who explain a tawakkul with it are explaining it in the light of the greatest of its fruits and the greatest of its benefits. So if he truly has tawakkul, then he will be pleased with whatever the one he has placed in charge of his affairs does. That's real tawakkul. To be totally pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Then he mentions... This is the fruit of tawakkul, and those who explain a tawakkul with it are explaining it in the light of the greatest of its fruits and the greatest of its benefits. So if he truly is tawakkul, then he, is, he will be pleased with whatever the one he has placed in charge of his affairs does. So whatever happens, whatever the outcome is, the one who is true, pure tawakkul, they will be pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal. Our Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and he says, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to say what has been decreed should be met with two matters a tawakkul before it and being pleased after it so whoever places reliance in Allah before the action and is pleased with whatever is decreed after the action then he has attained servitude, al ubudiyah or its meaning. We need to reflect on that. He said, Sheikh Islam, so whoever places reliance in a law before the action, so meaning before you make an effort, if you want to get your risk, that you've, you've put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before you did the action. And... And then you are pleased whatever, with, with whatever the results are after the action, then this is ubudiyah. Sheikh Islam says this is al ubudiyah. This is the real level of worship that we need to be uh, striving to attain.
And with that, it shows that the Mu'min, Ahli Iman, they have different levels and that we should strive our utmost to be of Ahli Iman, be of those of a high level of Iman. May Allah bless us with tawfiq, amin. Then he says, this is a middle claim saying, he says, I say, and this is the meaning of the saying of the Prophet وسلم, in the supplication of istikhara, O Allah, I seek your guidance to what is good through your knowledge and I ask for your assistance due to your power. And I ask you to grant me from your great bounty. So this is reliance and a trusting one's affair. So here Ibn al-Qayyim is breaking down the dua of his Sahara that a person, they're, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're entrusting, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and they're entrusting their affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is tawakkul. This is the reliance of the believer. And this is what we want to have. We want to gain that trust. We want to gain that tawakkul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we want to put our affairs and leave them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once we've made effort. Then he said, since you know and I do not know, meaning he's breaking down the dua of... of uh, the Prophet وسلم, the dua of istikhara, where the Prophet وسلم, says, and what we should say, you, since you know and I do not know, and you have the ability and power, and I do not have the ability, and you are the knower of all affairs of the hidden and unseen. This is Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the mu'min is putting his affairs and putting his trust in that. And also it shows us the importance of prophetic dua, of supplicating uh, as uh, in accordance with those dua, dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they show, they uh, articulate and manifest the, the ultimate budiyah and the ultimate uh, and the best form and way and means to gain the rida illah, to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the mu'min should be, should be haris on, is learning the prophetic uh, dua. And those dua, like that of istikhara, is actually a dua of seeking isti'ana, uh, you know, seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're consulting your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and as he said, you're putting your tawakkul, your trust in Allah for the end result. You're putting your trust in the beginning and you're putting your trust in the, in, in the end as uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned and that is a beautiful fa'id, a beautiful benefit that uh, Shaykh al-Islam uh, mentions that, you know, you're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of the affair and the end of the affair. The beginning of the affair, you're, tr you're, you're entrusting your affair with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your reasons are going to be uh, mashroor and they're going to be successful and so forth. And in the end of the affair, you are putting your trust with regards to the result. And that is true tawakkul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <sighs> then he says, Rahim Allah ta'ala. So this is declaring one's being devoid of the knowledge, power and ability and seeking nearness to him by means of his attributes. And this is what is most loved to him from the things that people seek nearness with. So these are the ways of tawassal. These are the ways of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves this, that you call upon him by his divine names and attributes and you seek his help and assistance. The, the fact that that is amazing in and of itself that Allah loves that. 
that you can please Allah by being humble and when you are sad and when you are calling upon him and crying and pleading to your Lord, you actually are attaining his favor by putting your trust and your hope in him instead of the creation. So that is, that's really powerful. And actualizing that and realizing that is, is, it comes from fiqh fideen. It comes from a ni'mah. Min ni'amillah. That's fiqh fideen. Min yiradallahu bi khayran yafiqhu fideen. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever, whenever Allah wants good for a person, gives him fiqh fideen. He gives him understanding of this deen. You know, he, he, he understands it. He practices it. He practices and implements what he or she has learned. They put it into practice and they are favored with fiqh, with understanding of it. Not just that they memorize and they quote it, which is very important and it's an aspect of ilm, but that true fiqh, it's coming from understanding those nasuls and practicing. Then he says, then he asked his Lord to ordain that affair for him, even if it is to his benefit in the short term and the long term, and that he should keep it away from him if it is harmful to him in the short term or the long term. So this is his need that he asked for. So nothing remains for him then except to be pleased with whatever is decreed for him. So he said, and decree whatever is good for me, wherever it is, then cause me to be pleased with it. So make it sakhara, often. So this supplication comprises great knowledge granted by Allah. There, there it is, it's fiqh. It's ilm, and it's fiqh. It's knowledge and it's understanding. Granted by Allah through revelation and realities of Iman. Again, look at how this whole treatise and how Shaykh al-Islam ties it in that this is all, this is all about your Iman, this tawakkul, and how tawakkul and Iman and all those other acts of ibadah, how they're tied together. That, and and they're, they're all a part of ubudiyah and actualizing ubudiyah, actualizing that, that level of uh, worship. So he says, so this supplication compri compri comprises great knowledge granted by Allah through the revelation and realities of Iman, from which is a tawakkul, and entrusting one's affair to him before what is decreed comes about, and being pleased and contented after it comes about. And this is the fruit of tawakkul, and entrusting one's affairs to him is a sign of its correctness. So if he is not pleased and contented or content with what is decreed for him, then his entrusting of his affairs was defective and futile. So that lack of rida, and that's that level of uh, tawakkul Ibn al-Qayyim was talking about, that lack of being content with what Allah has given you. This shows a deficiency in your iman, it shows a deficiency, of course, in your tawakkul. So by completing these eight levels, the servant will have completed a tawakkul and will be firmly upon it. Thus ends our discussion of tawakkul al Allah Azza wa Jal from Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of the mutawakkaleen. Those people who rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom He loves. He loves the mutawakkil, mutawakkilun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. So we want to be of them. And may Allah increase us with ilm, wa fiqh, wa iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and assist us in all of our affairs and bless us to be of those who turn to Him often and frequently. Bless us with ikhlas, wa thabat, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم